All rise. I want viewers watching my show to believe in themselves. Judge Hatchet is compelling. I was not the first one to throw a walk. Let me just tell you what you just said. Compassionate. I really enjoy being a judge. Now I am touching people who I will never know I touch. She's powerful. You should have never let them walk out of your life when she was three. And she's on the bench. Don't get me preaching up in here today. Right. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchet. Thomas Montgomery is suing his wife, Estelle Montgomery, in the amount of $12,000. Mr. Montgomery claims his wife used their money to purchase a van and other useless items without his permission. Ms. Montgomery claims the defendant is selfish and her intentions were just to help out their family. All rise. Court is now in session with the Honorable Judge Hatchett presiding. Your Honor. Thank you, officer. Um, you all may be seated. 35 years of marriage, and now you are operating under a legal separation. You are suing your, who you describe as soon to be your ex-wife, for $12,000. Um, and it's a very complicated situation based on the complaint I've read. All right, Mr. Montgomery, begin by telling me what happened. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, I'd like to begin, begin with uh, this woman over here, my ex-wife, or soon to be my ex-wife, Estelle, is always wore the pants in the family, had to make the final decisions. But on this one decision that she made, this was behind my back. Well, let's, let's start from the beginning. What kind of decisions did she make behind your back? When I first came in a relationship with her, I wasn't really planning to have kids. This case is about having kids now, later. I raised the kids that we had. I came to So you all had biological children? Three. Three children yeah. that you all had. Yeah. When you started this relationship, you weren't committed to having children, but you had children. And I know that you are happy that you did. Correct. I love my kids. Right. And I love the kids in question now. I just think well, that at this point, I'm six years old. We were planning on going on vacations at this time and also I was going to get this car that I've always wanted. A, a nice and what kind of car did you always want? A Corvette, of course. A Corvette? You know, like what a, like, color? Let me oh, guess. Please. Red. That would be correct. Of course it was a red <laughs> Corvette. You didn't even yeah. have to tell me that. I knew it was a red Corvette. In the complaint, it says that you all were contributing every month to the savings, kind of a dream life plan. Yeah, we started 10 years ago. He put in 200 and I put in 100 every month. Every month? For the last 10 years. For the last 10 mm -hmm. years. Estelle, so what was the purpose of that fund? Well, we had set aside this fund so that after our children were all grown and out the house, we would then travel and do a couple of things that we put off while we were raising our children. Children. Okay, yes. so you contributed $100 a uh -huh. month. He contributed two hundred dollars a month. There is no dispute about that. There's no there shouldn't so be are, anyway. So you were planning to, after your last child left home, that this would be a time that you all would travel. Correct. Okay. That we, we would have for and, ourselves. You for know? yourselves. Like our own bucket list. Oh, yeah. like your own bucket mm -hmm. list. I mm -hmm. like that. And but he also says that he wanted his dream car. Yeah. Okay, so you agree with that, that yeah. this was fun? We went, we went on several test drives for the quote-unquote dream car. The yes. dream car, the Corvette, mm -hmm. the red Corvette. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. what happened? Well, what happened along the way is my, my, my baby sister, who's always been in my life and our lives and our children's lives, unfortunately, she had a, she, it's hard for me to talk about it. I'm so but, sorry. Uh, she was in a very, very car, bad car accident, and she didn't make it. I am so sorry to hear she that. She didn't make it. I am. I am so sorry to hear that. And the children were away at camp when it happened. How, and we're the only how many children that they did know. she, does she, she have? She had three children. Three children. Eleven, seven, and five. Oh, wow. And the children were away at camp, and what happened? We had the children come to our house. And we told them what happened. And that was, that was hard enough. And, I, I mean, to have somebody else care for them was not even something on my mind at that point. This is family. We make adjustments for family. And some people in this courtroom don't want to make those adjustments. Coming up on The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. The father has drug addiction issues. Ooh. 
He cannot take care of those children, and my soon-to-be ex-husband knows this. And later... Why in the world would you write that on the back of her jacket? I was just trying to make a good joke for the class. How could you possibly think that would be funny? The verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Thomas Montgomery, who is suing his wife, Estelle Montgomery, for breach of contract. Did you sit down with your husband to say, look, Thomas, you know, I am devastated. My sister has been killed in this car accident, and I want to take care of these children? No, I, it, it didn't dawn on me to do it like that. And the reason it didn't dawn on me to do it like that is for the last 35 years, I've been married to a single person who put all of the major decision-making responsibility on me. I just Just like with anything else. Disagree. So I didn't take this as being anything out of the norm for us to do. If it had been, I would have handled it differently. But I've been making all the major decisions in this relationship for the last 35 years no, anyway. She, well, that's, you that's, a, I, that's the point I'm trying to make. She always wants to make the last and final decision. Half the time, she doesn't even include me. And that's what this lawsuit's about, because we had agreed to set this money aside for travel. I wanted to get this car. You know, and these children are very young. And they have a biological father who she doesn't really... Who cannot take care of them, but okay, go ahead. Put that as a footnote. I want to get back to that. But let me mm. just ask you this. You said that she always wore the pants in the family. That yeah. she... So why did you always defer to her to make all these decisions? I wouldn't say I deferred to her. I, I was being, you know, a gentleman. You know, but at some point, you know, uh, and I loved her. I wanted to keep her happy and, and make sure she stayed happy. But I wanted that red Corvette. She broke the agreement we had. The agreement was that uh, I would get a red Corvette once the kids moved out. She would want to go on the vacation. And she spent the majority of this money. And I put the majority of the money in the bank account. And that's why we're here today. So where is the money now? It's not in the bank account anymore? I bought a minivan. A with, minivan? I bought a minivan because Ooh, we that's needed trans a long way from a We Corvette. needed transportation. <laughs> not only for us to travel with, but we needed transportation now that we have I don't three even want small the kids. children. I don't even want the kids in the home with us. You might at not this want point. it, but things change and you weren't willing to make any changes other than it's not about the car, Your Honor. That was yeah. the last straw. He had already started making brand new moves, like cutting off his hair. For a long time there, he was dyeing his beard until it wouldn't take anymore. Then he moved out. So then he decides he wanted to be brand new and wants to be a single man, like he wanted to be in the beginning. So all we're really doing is going back to where he wanted to be anyway. You should have left my behind on the beach. So wait, wait, wait. After 35 years of marriage, you finally had this awakening that he should be by himself and you all shouldn't be married? That's well, she wants he's to be the housewife. one who filed for a separation. I didn't, but you know what? I got brand new, too. Why are you still mm. wearing it? That's another issue. Right here today, I'm just trying to get the 12000 back for my uh, little red Corvette. Let me tell you what bothers me. It doesn't sound like this has ever really been a working partnership. No, it hasn't. You know, that's not how marriages work. And you didn't even discuss with mm -hmm. him that the children were coming to live with you. No, I didn't. I, I, I mean, everything just happened so fast, and these children know us. They have a father. Well, True. Let's talk but about the father. The father. the father has drug addiction issues. Ooh. He cannot take care of those children, mm -hmm. and my soon-to-be ex-husband knows this. I disagree with These that. These children Judge look at him as being a father figure anyway. Their father is, uh, he works hard. He does the best he can. Uh, he's not always around, and he works a little bit too long. He parties probably too much. We all did at that age. But they're his children nonetheless, and I think he should be uh, more responsible in this matter. So he should be just thrown to the, they should well, just no, no, be no. thrown Let's to him. Let's talk about right? this. Maybe you are enabling the father. I don't think so. Well, maybe if he had the responsibility, he might step up
with some support systems around him. Well, he hasn't stepped up so far, so I can't imagine this is going to. Was he with change. your sister? No, he wasn't. Oh, he wasn't with your no. sister. Mm. All right, but Thomas, and he you hasn't saying... shown any kind of responsibility towards them even after this. Well, be Has he and I was hoping the that that financially? would happen. He's not doing anything. He's well, why not doing don't you anything take him to any court? different. We will when we get to that phase of this. But the, all of this is just happening now. Well, beyond all that, like I said in the beginning, you know, she always gets her way. I've uh, given in to her for 30 years. This was the one thing I want was this little Corvette. I, I sympathize with the kids that they're, you know, they, they need a, a, a good parent, good upbringing. Seems and, like you already you made know. your decision. But she should have taken two thirds of the money and left me one third for the sports car when I put in double than she more than she did so, so what does the twelve thousand represent does that represent the twelve thousand that she illegally took from the, the fund because she put in 100 months i put in 200 and there was thirty six thousand to be in there in the beginning so if you put in 200 and she put in 100 you should get two-thirds back exactly so but you're only asking for one-third back well, I have one third. She left one third in the bank account. Oh, she account. left one third in the bank account. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that leaves us the $12,000. Yeah. Like I said, he had already started acting different anyway. Well, so, maybe it's because he felt like he was 60 and this was a new phase of his life and he wanted to enjoy it, that he would be able to travel with you mm -hmm. and that you all would enjoy life and he'd get his red Corvette. You made some decisions on your own that are affecting him. Now, it sounds like in the ideal world, you all would reconcile, he get his vet, and you all raise the children, but what he says is this is not his decision, no, he and he doesn't want the responsibility, you know? And that is his decision. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like to me that this marriage can't be saved. Mm -hmm. But under these circumstances, I am going to award him the $12,000 because it's the fair thing to do. There's nothing further judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $12,000. Thank you. All rise. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $12,000. I'm sorry I had to bring you to court. I had dreams too, and the car was there. Well, Thomas... I hope you sleep real good at night knowing that you chose a car over your family. Coming up. Why in the world would you write that on the back of her jacket? I was just trying to make a good joke for the class. How could you possibly think that would be funny? Network featuring dynamic judges and live legal programming. Well, we're not oh, at your school. We're in my courtroom. Unique court shows. Where is any information about the company? Live legal news. That's what you should have done. And a commitment to justice. Either you tried or you did it. The next generation of court programming in one dynamic network. Justice Central. You're watching Justice Central. Stay tuned. You're watching Justice Central. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. Gwen Stewart is suing Diana Page in the amount of $82.99. Ms. Stewart claims Ms. Page's daughter defaced her daughter's jacket and caused her to be targeted by her peers at school. Ms. Page claims she did everything she could to mitigate the problem, but says Ms. Stewart has been impossible to satisfy. Ms. Stewart, you're in court with your daughter, Jenny. And you're suing the defendant who is in court with her daughter, Vera. And I understand that there was an incident at school involving the two daughters. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Ms. Stewart, what happened? I was in the middle of making dinner. I was defrosting a chicken, and I got a phone call, and I was very alarmed. I was told that my daughter would not be taking the bus home, but that I needed to go and pick her up. What happened? Why were you so upset that day? I take science class with Vera, and I just put on my jacket, and I walk down the hall, and all of a sudden I see everybody laughing at me, staring at me. All the guys are now hitting me. So what happened? I mean, you have these jackets in the court. <sighs> Hit me here, and then it has arrows to both of your shoulders. So how did you figure out what was going on? Well, one of the teachers, Miss Taylor, she said, come here. She showed me the jacket. And of course, I was very upset. Um, 
She told me she, we later found out that Vera did it. Coming up. Why in the world would you write that on the back of her jacket? I was just trying to make a good joke for the class. How could you possibly think that would be funny? The verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Gwen Stewart, who is suing Diana Page for property damage. Did you get a call from the school as well? I did. I had to leave straight from work and come down to find out what was wrong. They said that my daughter Vera had caused some trouble with another student earlier today. I came down and they told me what happened with the jacket. I, of course, mortified and made her apologize to Jenny, tried to figure out what to do with Miss Stewart. So she started telling me, it's an $83 jacket. Give me the $83. So I said, listen, listen, let, let me take it home. I'll clean it and I'll give it back to you as soon as possible. Well, before we get to that, I want to hear from Vera. Why in the world would you write that on the back of her jacket? I was just trying to make a good joke for the class. I a mean, good joke for the class. How would you have felt? I would have thought it would have been funny, but... How could you possibly think that would be funny? I didn't know that it was going to cause this much trouble for everyone, and I didn't know it was going to go that far. How did you punish her? Uh, she took away her TV privileges for two weeks and made her apologize again and again. And then there was another incident uh, later on when I couldn't get the stain out of the jacket. Right. So I asked her where I could go and purchase another one. When I went to the store, they said that the jacket was two seasons old and no longer in stock. Judge Hatchett's verdict when we return. So I remembered that during Christmas time, uh, there was, I went and bought Vera a jacket for, uh, to give to her for her birthday because there was a clearance sale going on. And what I did is um, when I got home, took uh, Vera to her room and showed, and showed her the jacket and was like, what do you think of this? And she loved it, tried it on, thought it was great, everything. And I, then I reminded her, remember what you did to Jenny's jacket? You're going to have to give this to Jenny now. So. And so, is this the other jacket that's in the courtroom? Yes. Yeah. Your Honor, it was way too big. She had me go and pick it up at the school. She'll grow into it. It was way too big. It's not Jenny's style, and it certainly wasn't worth $83. It was a very cheap jacket. You say, well, I would think it's funny. Mm -mm. You wouldn't think it was funny. Somebody is beating up on you, walking down the hall. And so you know what's going to happen? I am going to order that you pay the $82.99 to Miss Stewart. And I want you to give her this jacket. She can have the jacket back. But I'm suggesting that you make her go with you to a homeless shelter and give this to a child who doesn't have a jacket. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $82.99. Nothing further, we'll stand adjourned. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. All rise. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $82.99. It really wasn't about the cost of the jacket. It was the principle of the matter. Vera, I hope you've learned a lesson. I'm really sorry. She certainly has, and we'll be donating the jacket.